Okay, so I want you to think back for a second and ask yourself this question. What was the first guitar amp you used and did it actually sound good? You see, for me, we have to take it back all the way to college. I was using a little one by eight Roland Cube and for the most part, it did what I wanted it to. Did it sound good? I don't think it really mattered at that point. I was a beginner just trying to learn the electric guitar and just trying to learn how amps work in the first place. I was told it was something called a solid state, but I was also told because I had a lot of really great misconceptions about the guitar and about gear at the time that you really need a tube amp. Like anyone who's anyone only plays tube amps. And I really took that to heart. So for years, I only played tube amps no matter what that meant. And don't get me wrong, most tube amps that you can buy nowadays sound incredible if you know what you're doing, whether that be in a bedroom situation, an apartment situation like I'm in, or in an actual studio. But I remember a specific time when I went to jam with some friends and we were all college guitar players just trying to make it through. None of us were playing gear that was that expensive, mostly Mexican strats, and I think the most expensive one there might have been my Highway 1 Blue Strat, which was my baby. So sad I sold it. Same guitar Corey Wong uses. And the only amp they had for me to play was a solid state Fender Champion 100. At the time, I felt like I had been betrayed by my friends. Like, literally betrayed. How could they give me a solid state amp? And I literally frowned throughout the entire jam and just complain that the reason my tone wasn't as good as theirs or Eddie Van Halen's was simply because I was playing a solid state. And you see, when I got to this space that I'm in right now, I found out I wanted to do a lot of recording for this little website called YouTube. I quickly began to realize that for most players, really cranking a tube amp is not the most respectful thing for those that might be living in the same vicinity as you, especially at 3 a.m. For me, what happened was that my neighbors ended up calling the cops on me more than one time. And it's not fun when the cops end up showing up to your door at 3 a.m. And the only thing they can say to you is, dude, you've got to stop. But again, I was still in that old mindset of the only way to get good tone is through tube amp, is through properly micing it up. And I had bought a few virtual amps at that point, but I didn't really know how to make them sound good or that they could be used for more than just bad recordings on Instagram. But I really had no choice at that point. It was either have the cops called on me every single day and be the most obnoxious neighbor ever or find an alternate solution. Because I didn't want to be a completely horrible neighbor, I decided with the ladder. One thing that I think is not spoken about a lot is that learning to use virtual lamps is a little bit more difficult in my opinion than just learning to use a tube amp. Not only do you have to know those EQ settings and know how a regular amp would function, but you also have to learn about recording and about gain staging. And that's where those early recordings came in. And to my ear, they didn't sound very good. But I was pretty content. I wasn't making any super serious YouTube videos at the time. And I was basically just doing some smaller Instagram stuff to try and get some traction so someone might recognize me from some weird hashtag and eventually I might be playing on Justin Bieber's tour. Fun fact, that never happened. But as I sat there not playing for Justin Bieber, I wondered how I was gonna get this done. At some point I knew I was gonna have to take recording seriously and especially when the pandemic hit and this wave of virtual guitar recording came where you could actually have someone hit you up to do a session for them, I knew I was gonna have to adapt. I remember specifically asking one Instagram player, his name is Jude Smith. He's one of the best players I've seen on the platform as a whole. <laughs> I DM'd him and I asked him, how the heck did you get that tone? And he was like, I just went DI through my pedal board. And I was like, what? How? It sounds that good? And then I would DM a bunch of other Instagram players and I would be like, how did you get that tone? And they would go, I just went DI through my pedal board, Mike. It's not that hard. Learn how to use it. So I took my little Focusrite interface, which works great. And I was like, I'm going to master this. I'm going to really get down to it. I'm going to learn how these guys get these great tones. And let me tell you what, it still sounded terrible. Remember what I was saying about before about all those different variables? Well, those really 
map, these things react like a real amp, which is something I didn't realize at first. Even though I had the volume on the virtual amp only at three, I was clipping the gain going into the interface and that was completely ruining my tone. The signal was over the top and I had to turn the volume down to like almost zero and everything still sounded terrible. And it's almost like I couldn't even get a clean tone unless I wanted the volume levels to be completely out of whack. But as with anything in life, I kept going and it started to sound a little bit better. But that's mostly because I started doing a lot of full mixes for my YouTube page. This was very much prior to the every telly player in 30 seconds and that kind of thing. And that stuff is cool. And when you really get into it, a virtual amp can sound pretty good, even if you don't know what you're doing in a mix, if everything else sounds pretty good. I was doing rhythm parts that were pretty simple. They sounded kind of like this. But when I would solo the tracks, they sounded kind of awful. And that's when the big thing came. Like we were talking about the gain before. The gain was a gigantic variable that changed everything for me. I finally realized how much I was clipping the signal going into these virtual amps. They don't need a lot of gain coming in, especially with the gear that I was using. You see, I've been really fortunate and the homies at Sweetwater actually sent me this DI box. It's a Rupert Neve DI and it kind of amplifies your signal and gives you the real signal of what you're playing and this is not a sponsored video but this thing is part of the story and when they sent me this I was super excited I was like oh my gosh they sent me this absolute weapon it's gonna sound unbelievable and I plugged it in and it felt like everything was still sounding the same and I was like at this point I was like okay again I was like maybe virtual lamps don't sound that good but that's when all those variables that I was talking about before really come into play knowing what you're doing not only with amp settings but with the specific interface and the specific gear that you're using and trust me once I learned to use the knee it was a beast so like with many things in life right before I quit I decided to give it one more chance just one more shot do not miss your chance to flow this opportunity comes once in a lifetime yo mom spaghetti before I quit for good and just recognize that virtual amps just don't sound good and the only reason that they do is because all the Instagram guys, they are just big fakers. And I played with the gain and I finally got that tone. I had to know what the lead tones would sound like now. <laughs> I had to know what the clean tone would sound like now. I had to know what the lead tones would sound like in the mix. There's a reason why the Polyphias of the world and these new age players can use amp sims because they've gotten really good. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. All the gear is listed down below if you want to check it out. More stories coming soon and have a fantastic day.